Hi everyone, uh, welcome to the webcast Never a Dull Moment finds from the HathiTrust US Federal Documents Collection uh, and thank you for your interest in HathiTrust. Um, my name is Valerie Glenn, Federal Documents Analyst and today I'm going to share some information about the federal documents in HathiTrust as well as give some examples of content you wouldn't necessarily think of as being a government document. First, some logistics. Um, the session is being recorded and the link as well as the slides will be shared with all registered participants. Um, second, as you have noticed, we're asking folks to, to mute their uh, mute their microphones and shut off their cameras. And so if you have any questions or comments, then please type them into the chat. Um, Heather Christensen is the program officer for Federal Documents and Collections, and she'll be monitoring that and will be addressing those questions um, at the end of the presentation. Okay, um, so the goal for today's session is to highlight the variety of topics covered by federal documents in the HathiTrust Digital Library. It's not intended to be a comprehensive or rigorous look at the collection. Uh, think of it more as some show and tell. Um, what cool things do we have? The, but first, I do want to give an overview of the HathiTrust Federal Documents Program, whose mission is through coordinated and collective action, expand and enhance digital access to U.S. federal publications, including those issued by GPO and other federal agencies. One of the program's goals is to build a comprehensive HathiTrust digital collection of federal documents distributed in print format by the Government Publishing Office as part of the Federal Depository Library Program. And to that end, we've created a separate collection in HathiTrust, the U.S. Federal Documents Collection, which contains items we've identified as U.S. federal documents. So all of the examples I'm giving today are in that collection. That's not to say that you can't find them just by searching the digital library. It's just that we've tried to, um, to segment out the federal documents so they can be searched independently. Okay. We currently have more than 1.1 million items in the collection. And as of February 1st, this is really exciting for us, we have more than 1 million fully viewable federal documents. Um, the materials have been contributed by the more than 50 HathiTrust member libraries, of which many are members of the FDLP as well. And the collection has primarily been built through mass digitization, such as Google and the Internet Archive, but libraries have also deposited locally digitized materials. Okay, so now we'll, we'll start moving on. We'll move on to the fun part. Um, instead of attempting a live demo, uh, today I'll be sharing some screenshots of the items uh, on, on the slides. Um, participants, again, will receive links and slides in an email. Um, and then I've also created a separate collection just of, of these, uh, these items. So if you, if you search how do you trust collections for never a dull moment, um, then this should be, the, these should be the only collection that, that pops up. So uh, when people think government documents, they don't necessarily think of literature, and yet there's a fair amount of um, content that in poems, plays, and literary guides. Uh, for example, we have The Flight Before Christmas uh, from Approach Magazine, uh, just a takeoff on Twas the Night Before Christmas. Um, uh, some Air Force author decided <laughs> The, 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 to have some fun um, right before the holidays. Uh, now, unfortunately, I have no Valentine's Day related content in this presentation. I couldn't find any love poems or uh, or things that are in were in journals uh, that that are that were literary in nature for Valentine's Day. Um, most of them, I'd say, were were um, trade publications talking about uh, importing roses. But so so no Valentine's Day content today. My apologies. Um, so there's also things like um, plays, hospital days, a musical comedy with words and music um, produced by the Army Service Forces in the 1940s. And this is an example of content where um, we, we have the su su suggested schedule. This hospital days is a script. It includes uh, things that you would, you would see if you were performing a play for your community theater. Um, it has information on set construction, all of the roles, the costumes, everything that you need to put on a production. It's just that this happens to be produced um, by the Army. Um, uh, we also have a fair amount of cookbooks and recipes. Um, if you're familiar with federal documents collections, you may have come across the, um, 
the again army um, guides for producing uh, you know recipes for up to 500 people um, what what those uh, what those uh, portions portions are like um, but there's also a fair amount of um, just general hi um, recipes highlighting different types of foods for example the uh, National Fish and Seafood Promotional Council um, part of the Department of Commerce um, includes some sauteed oysters with shallots and recipes for light and crispy catfish uh, even including the nutritional information of these these recipes um, uh, and and kind of an old school uh, illustration of the daily food guide uh, from the 1940s um, gives you an example of the different food groups some examples you know what they look like um, and that unfortunately the the illustration doesn't talk about how how these are for thrifty families versus other families but but you get the idea so um, also uh, information from you know back at look, way way back 30 years in the 1980s um, information on cooking for people with food allergies so some of the same things that um, may be more high profile today um, were still were still being highlighted in government publications 30 years ago so, um, and NASA is so special that it gets its own category <laughs> um, for lots of lots of fun graphics, also uh, lots of information on on missions to other planets. Um, many government government agencies over the years have have highlighted the work that their employees do and what it what it's like to work for that particular agency, um, and the kinds of experience or you know education that you need in order to um, to work for the agency. Um, and so you get aerospace engineers were tomorrow, tomorrow minded people. Uh, so thinking about what it takes to, to send, uh, send man to the moon, send, uh, send rockets to outer space. Um, so that's, we, we get some of those, we get, um, the, um, the, the Voyager plan, the Voyager expedition, we got, um, illustrations of rocket boosters and what it, the, the mechanics of it all. Um, and then we also have um, in government documents, um, the, the benefits of full text search, I would say, is that you can search for the names of famous people and see what government documents they uh, appear in. So for, for instance, um, in this list of members of science workshops on interstellar communication, you see Carl Sagan from Cornell University, uh, who was involved in, in those workshops. So. Um, so something that uh, to keep in mind when talking about government documents is that we are talking about um, information for citizens of this this uh, country, and it doesn't matter how old or young. Um, it's trying to to provide educational information for anyone. And so uh, you see, for guys and gals looking for summer jobs, um, how how to go about doing that. So right, everybody can get a job, but you gotta be hip to how to do it. Start now before you get out of school and beat all the other cats to the punch. Check the want ads. Uh, back from 1969, the President's Council on Youth Opportunity. And then we see uh, Smokey's Fire Prevention Activity Book. Uh, this one has a, a football theme, so uh, don't fumble with matches and then hide and seek finding <laughs> finding something uh, if they have to do with either fire prevention or football. So that that's quite that's quite a hide and seek. Um, just um, activity guides um, for mostly for younger folks. Um, and then uh, the National Library Service for the Blind and Physically Handicapped always um, ha produces um, guides to particular genres of fiction. And so you've got science fiction and fantasy, uh, letting you know what materials are available on either cassette or in Braille so that you can think, receive from, from that service. So, uh, animals, always uh, a, a popular topic and incredibly uh, rich <laughs> uh, when it comes to federal documents. So you've got the bears and you uh, from the Forest Service. Um, behavior and neurology of lizards, uh, proceedings of an interdisciplinary colloquium from the National Institute of Mental Health. Um, and so here you see some information on um, 
energy and effectiveness of displays of um, disputes of iguana disputes. <laughs> um, it basically, displays uh, the observations and the the variances there are. Um, and the stomach contents of the Bering Sea King crab. Um, <laughs> this particular table discusses the 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 difference um, in occurrence of, I guess, <laughs> of the the diets of male and female um, Bering Sea King crabs. So, um, so something. I'll be quite honest, I never would really think to look for <laughs> um, as a government document, but but we have it and I'm sure that um, a lot of uh, work went into it and this is probably not the only um, study there is. So, uh, okay, there there's no problem we can't solve. Um, obviously the government uh, has vested interest in in figuring out the answers to, to certain problems. Uh, and so we see um, information and um, designs for a solar doghouse. Um, this is in um, the first Passive Solar Home Awards, um, co-produced by um, the Department of Housing and Urban Development and the Department of Energy in 1979. Um, and so I'm sure that I'm not sure if any if any of you have tried to build a solar doghouse or um, are interested in thereof, then I would I would love to know about it. Um, there's also um, the Christmas tree pest manual, so how to how to um, identify and remove pests from your Christmas tree before it's too late. Um, and then uh, something else I want to highlight, actually, that wasn't that I didn't have a, a slide for, is um, the YouTube war fighting in a world of cameras in every cell phone and Photoshop on every computer from the Strategic Studies Institute um, back in 2009. So I think a lot of these materials are, um, for one reason or another, they they may the the topics may first bubble up in uh, military publications, of which we have quite a few. Um, but then you can see that they they make their way through um, other agencies as well. So, and and a, a fun fun topic, uh, depending on your point of view, the government um, is always um, a a source and a, a, of suspicion, I guess. Uh, so there there are varying conspiracy theories that are out there. Uh, popular one, the Roswell report, case closed. Um, so we we get some some images of what may or may not be a UFO, um, or may just be a weather balloon. Um, comparison of witnesses accounts to the Air Force activities. Uh, so again, from the the Roswell report, um, and why people may or may not believe it. Um, Project MK Ultra, the CIA's program of research in behavioral modification. This just um, gives you uh, some this, this was a congressional hearing back in 1977, gives you the, the table of contents for that. So, um, and, and something pretty popular are travel and language guides, um, many produced by uh, the Department of State, also again um, produced by um, the, some of the ones I'm highlighting today are from the War Department. Um, and so you've got um, a pocket guide to Paris and the cities of Northern France. It gives, uh, it's, it's a travel guide, it gives, um, military members advice on finding food in Paris. Um, it also gives different maps um, of, of various French cities, um, highlighting cultural activities or, or things that they may want to um, pursue in their downtime. Um, so I thought that that was pretty neat. Um, one thing that I haven't done is compare these to, to maps of today and see what, what the overlap is and what's changed. So. Um, we also have a short guide to New Zealand, um, and actually this um, in the past has been one of our mo the most popular federal documents accessed, which I find uh, somewhat amusing. It's from, produced by the War and Navy Departments in 1943, um, and again produced for military members talking about New Zealand and, and how, how different it is uh, or, and how similar it is uh, to America. So um, that's just the... the um, just reading some of that, obviously you need to take some of this with a grain of salt give, um, given the time it was produced, um, but it's a, kind of a fascinating look at um, just at other countries from, from an American po point of view. So uh, we also, the, um, this again, uh, produced by the, the War Department, Greek, a guide to the spoken language. This is not the only uh, language guide that they produced. Um, but you can see um, general questions. 
that, that are being asked, where is, where is it the restaurant? <laughs> where is the restaurant? Um, and pronunciation guides um, for having, getting, getting directions um, to a particular location. Um, okay. um, we also have um, a fair amount of publications um, on, on women and, and their role in the government, their, their role in industry. Um, and so this, um, this image is from Women's Effective War Work Requires Good Posture, produced by the Women's Bureau in 1943. Uh, the Women's Bureau produced a fair amount of publications um, going um, back, I mean, obviously um, the, on the advent of, of World War II, um, quite a few publications um, um, on women in industry and women, especially um, in factories, um, but they also produced um, statistics. So we've got employment of women in the federal government, 1923 to 1939. Um, not only statistics, but the, the varying roles that women held. Uh, so maybe contrary to popular belief, there, there have been there have been women working for a long time. Um, okay. And then um, government documents are always, I think, uh, good for historical perspective on topics. Um, this, as, as a remote worker myself, I found this, uh, this hearing on telecommuting a 21st century solution to traffic jams and terrorism uh, quite amusing. This uh, was, um, was a hearing held in 2006. And no, there is, there's no mention of working in pajamas um, in this particular hearing. So that's, that's a more recent um, development, I guess. Um, okay, we also have um, the publication, A Nation of Opportunity, Realizing the Promise of the Information Superhighway. Um, I don't know how many, how, how long ago that term has, has gone out of date, but it, it lives on forever uh, from this 1996 publication. So. Um, and then when I, um, when I wrote the description for this webinar, I, bas I did want to say, you know, it's not just rules and regulations, right? Government documents, not just rules and regulations, but there are a fair amount of rules and regulations that we do have in the collection. Um, so, such as these, uh, the rules and regulations from Yosemite National Park in 1921. Um, and in some ways, it's a travel guide as well as rules and regulations. Um, these were issued for many national parks uh, for, for several years, um, the 1920s and I think early 1930s. Um, but you see here um, a general description of, a par of the park, um, living in the Yosemite, um, how to reach the park by railroad or by automobile. Um, and then again, um, rates for the um, the different uh, services at at Camp Curry, um, and so you can see. Let's see, uh, haircut was sixty cents. So that's ladies' shampoo was a dollar. So um, always interesting to see. Always interesting to see the differences between men's and women's uh, grooming prices. Um, so. Uh, oh, and dancing per evening per couple, not to exceed 25 cents. So, so that's that sounds pretty good for a night of entertainment. Um, okay, um, we do have the we do have you know the standard titles, the Code of Federal Regu Regulations, the Federal Register. Um, again, if you're familiar with depository collections, you may know that um, agencies often reproduce their own section of the um, Code of Federal Regulations and republish it here. And so this is an example of that. It's um, rules and regulations for artificial islands and fixed structures on the outer continental shelf reproduced by the Coast Guard in 1972. But um, this is, it's titled 33 of the Code of Federal Regulations sub subchapter N parts. So, um, Okay, now I've I've gone through this wow very very quickly. Um, apologies for that, um, but I do want to spend some time on um, how to find these items. Um, how do you trust? Um, I gave I gave the number of federal documents we have over 1.1 million. How do you trust itself has um, more than 16 million volumes um, that are searchable, uh, and so uh, like I said, there there are links to all of these, um, but how do you trust collections? Um, we've we've we can um, we've produced a, a subset of of particular items that we call collections, and I'll show you the screen in a minute. Um, but we've we've created again the 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 large um, collection of more than a million um, federal documents. Um, we also have created several collections um, based on priorities for the U.S. federal documents program. So, for instance, um, 
the, you, uh, the Environmental Protection Agency is an area of focus for, for the program. And so we've collected, um, we've grouped all of those publications together in, in a collection, what we're calling a collection. Um, and like, likewise for the congressional serial set. So as items are added to the Hathi Trust Digital Library, we are um, we are updating these collections so they're not static. Um, that's j just to keep that in mind. Um, but also, I want to highlight the collections because anyone can create them. You don't have to be affiliated with a Hathi Trust partner library. Um, you can log in with, you can create a friend account or you can log in, say you have a Gmail address. Uh, you, can, you can log in with that. You can create a collection. You can make it public. You can, you can keep it private. Um, but so something, something for you to do if you want to, particularly if you want to group um, publications together and, and, be, and be able to search them, just, just search those, um, those individual ones. Um, let's see. So you can, um, you, uh, you can obviously find the items in, in the collections, either searching or browsing. Um, and then you can also just go like hatitrust.org is our URL. So you can search the digital library from there. Um, the collections that we've, the, the U.S. Federal Documents collection we've created has been based on um, metadata from the U.S. Federal Documents Registry that we have where um, we're trying to um, defi define the universe, as you will, um, of U.S. Federal Government publications. And so um, finding items that aren't yet in the digital library. So. Um, and this is just a screenshot of the, um, what the, the, homepage of the U.S. Federal Documents Collection looks like. Um, you can you can get to it, and I don't, I'll see. Um, well, I've, I've included the link, but you can always get to collections from, from any Haunty Trust page. Um, there's a, ta a tab at the top that says collections. Um, and so, so this is an outdated screenshot. Um, we now have, um, we've added at least 10,000 um, 10, items in the collection. Um, but you can, the, the thing I, that I really like about it is that you can search the full text. Um, and so I never would have, would, would have been able to find uh, a flight before, the flight before Christmas. Uh, I never would have been able to find that just uh, searching the catalog because approach has, has none of the words flight Christmas, it may have flight in, in the metadata, but, um, but some of that you're never gonna find. Um, any other way, uh, so which I think is one of the the strengths of this is that you can you can search the full text. Um, we also have have facets along the side. Um, now, you, as you may suspect, um, facets for an, a one plus million collection aren't going the the top ones aren't going to be the most relevant necessarily, uh, unless you are looking for say U.S. Atomic Energy Commission, and then you you can limit it to nineteen thousand um, for the author. Um, but so, but this is just kind of a way to, um, our way to attempt to put an, put, um, like, allow a separate access point for searching of federal government information. Um, like I said, it's not, it's not the only way to find it. This isn't, um, it's not like we've removed the federal documents from all of the digital library, um, but this is a way to, to search a subset there, so. Okay, so uh, so how to find out more? Uh, you can. This links to the the Hathi Trust, the Federal Documents Program page, um, where we've uh, listed some of our initiatives as well as the plans. Um, and then my address, Heather's address, um, and then um, if if um, you ever have have questions about content in Hathi Trust in general, or you want to give us feedback, then that feedback at issues.hathitrust.org is a, a wonderful address to memorize and get to know. So, And so, yes, I know I've gone through this very, very quickly. I apologize. Um, but if there are any questions or comments you have about the content, uh, Heather, have there been any? Hi, everyone. This is Heather Christensen. And I have been monitoring the chat, and I did not see any questions. Okay. It isn't surprising since it, this is more show and tell. Uh, someone says, I noticed a gap in the Fed Docs collection, which is more of a comment, I suppose, than a question. But maybe you could comment on that, Valerie. Oh, sure. Um, so, yes, there are gaps. Um, <laughs> 
uh, we, like I said, we only have um, a million, 1.1 million plus, and I think estimates have said that there are at least, uh, what, 2.5 million federal documents that have been produced. Um, we are actively working to identify and fill gaps, um, but, and so um, if there was something specific, like, um, like if it was just, if it's like an issue of a journal, that's something, or if it's a, like I was looking for this particular publication and I didn't find it, um, that those are, I'd say, those are two common um, experiences. Uh, but so I would say if, if, you, if you notice any of that, then we would love to hear about it, just because even though we're looking, it doesn't mean that we're gonna catch everything. Um, so please, I'd say please feel free to either reach out to me or send to feedback, um, either way, that's. Um... So there have been a few more questions that have come in. Thank you, Valerie. Um, one question I saw about a hundred thousand items that aren't in full view. Why is that? So, uh, so we how we define a federal government document is in part based on um, what is in the federal depository library collection. Um, there and so what how we're defined we use that, which I, I think seems obvious as part of our scope is FDLP. Um, but so. Now that we've digitized this material and um, the the folks in the the University of Michigan Copyright Office are looking at the definition of federal gov government document for copyright purposes. Um, and so from their perspective, things like the Smithsonian, which are quasi-governmental, as I guess as I would call it, um, they have been determined not to be fully viewable in Hathi Trust. So if, the, if something was produced after 1920 or 1923 or later, then those are still gonna be limited view. Um, we've also found um, examples of some, some materials that may have um, copyrighted content. Um, and, the, the, like, uh, in, and in some cases, let's say a photographer has something included in a publication and they've contacted us to say, wait, this is this is under my copyright. Um, and so the publication has been closed that way. Um, another reason is that um, we we use several factors, so several, several um, pieces of information to try and identify a federal document based on the metadata. Uh, and so we look for and this is, I don't know if any of you are catalogers, um, but we look specifically for information in the 008 field of the mark record. Um, specifically, there's a byte where if it's marked F, then it's federal government document. And if there's another, like if place of publication is U for United States, then, then those will be opened. Um, in some cases, we have US federal government documents that were not published in the United States. And so, Right now, those are considered, those are closed um, for Hathi Trust purposes. Um, there are also some, some metadata records that don't have that F, even though they're federal documents. So like we've, we've identified them from the agency, like from the author or from the publisher. Um, and so, so those may be limited, they may be limited view for that reason as well. So, um, so there's not one answer. Um, we are working to open as many as we can, and I know that Several of you, I'm sure, have um, have given us feedback on um, things that that should be open that are currently limited view, uh, and so we do uh, we do respond to those and, and try to to work to to make more content accessible. So. Thank you, Valerie. So here's another good question: How could we contribute additional amazing titles or content to your Never a Dull Moment collection? You you want to contribute to mine and not make your own? <laughs> That's, um, um, I well I guess if if you want if you want to contribute to, to to mine then you can you can feel free to email me the titles and and I'll um, continue to update it. Um, it's, there's not I don't think right now there's a way to have um, a group own a collection unless you have you've registered it with a shared email address. So there's not but um, but I think. If you want, um, creating creating your own collection is is fairly easy to do. Um, as an example, um, on gov.gal a few months ago, there was someone looking for um, 
digital copies of the Plum Book. And um, I found out that, you know, obvi obviously it's not called the Plum Book in, in the metadata. Uh, it's policies and uh, policy and supporting positions of the U.S. federal government. And I think I got some of those words out of order. Um, but so I went ahead and um, created a collection of, of just the ones that we had because they weren't all on the same catalog record. And so there's maybe six or seven um, items in that publication, but they're, they're all grouped together. Um, and so, so I, th I mean, I, I think it's, um, I think the collection um, building function in Hadi Trust is is an underrated um, aspect, and I think um, especially especially allowing for the searchability for all of that. Um, I think I think people should should experiment, <laughs> play around. Oh. Thank you. So someone has also reported a issue. It looks like with searching, um, searching for the flight before Christmas and receiving. Uh, 1,330 results um, and trying it with quote marks and also uh, not receiving any results. So I would just say that's something we need to look into because that's not certainly the expected behavior there. Not, so, at, all. not uh, at all. We will definitely take a look at that. Let's see other questions. Um, Someone comments, so since most of HathiTrust's federal documents were the result of mass digitization, many times the fold-out sheets were not included. We have a document that includes a page that HathiTrust lacks. Would you like to be notified? And I would say there, um, we, we do have a, a working group in our user support uh, group that is looking particularly at uh, completeness of uh, volumes in HathiTrust. So we would appreciate knowing about it via the feedback link that's on all of our pages because we are interested in um, completeness of the volumes, of course, in HathiTrust. And a related question is, should we hang on to the document, on, to a document and the possibility that you might need it or do you prefer to work with the original library that uploaded it? Um, and I assume that is related to uh, uh, if there's a correction or, or if, if someone wants to contribute a copy. Um, in general, we, we, uh, we work with our members who are contributing digitized content, but we're um, happy to work with any additional members to contribute digitized content. Um, I, I would want to follow up more on an answer to that. I don't know if you have any other comments, Valerie, on that particular one. No, I was going to defer to you. So that's what I've done. And so then a related uh, question about if something's missing, could we send you our copy uh, to digitize? and and I would say right now we just don't we don't really have a, a overall digitization function for HathiTrust the material. Excuse oh, me, are digitized uh, by our members, and um, it's something we hope to be able to do better in in the future um, in terms of uh, more collaborative ways to fill in the gaps. I, w I do want to add to that too, is that um, it is important, obviously the digitization is important, but um, we also need metadata for any of the digital copies. So um, I know that um, not all libraries have fully cataloged government documents collections, um, but so, but even, and, and hope that by digitizing that, you know, they, they don't have to catalog, um, but we, we still need the metadata to be able um, to describe the document and to, in some cases, identify that it is a federal document. So another question, oh, I see now this is from Marie. Thank you, Marie. Suppose a patron wants a government document that is present in the monthly catalog, but which we don't have in our own library. The document is not in HathiTrust either. Is there some way we can notify you of a request to digitize, so to speak, for those libraries that are actively scanning and uploading to HathiTrust? You can certainly let us know via the feedback 
link? Again, it's it's a uh, these are very good questions, and I appreciate hearing these needs because uh, we do want to consider better ways to add to our collection uh, based on what people really want and need and are looking for. So, so thank you again. And I would say at this point, put it into our uh, feedback, and we would do our best. There's another comment that my experience has been that non-standard page sizes were not well digitized. Is that policy or just an accident of practice? And Valerie, I'll jump in on this one again too. This it is it is uh, somewhat of an outcome of mass digitization that with the digitization processes, there's there's certain parameters that have to be met in order to achieve the economy of scale. But but Heather, would you like to mention um, that when our library partners have done their own local digitization, um, obviously it's not the scale, um, but th they've been able to develop local projects and tailor that so that um, the, there, there may be, um, the, the, the varying pages may um, appear better in HathiTrust. Yes, thank you, Valerie. Are there other questions? We certainly appreciate all these good questions. Are there any favorite federal documents that um, I didn't include that I now need to look for to see if we have them in HathiTrust? Valerie, I don't see any anything <laughs> coming through, but I'm sure people are looking around right now for those. Um, though I do see some comments that say too much fun, thank you, and and um, appreciation for ease of navigation within Hathi Trust, and thank you for those comments. That is great. Yeah. So if there are no more questions, I guess we will uh, conclude. But we certainly um, appreciate your time. Yes, thank you all very much. So, and again, please reach out to us if you have any uh, comments or questions uh, as you continue to navigate the digital library. I did see one more question that just came in. Okay. Um, a while ago, the documents which were in Hathi Trust had limited access to the public. What is the current? What are the current limitations on access? Um, so e everyone can access regardless um, if you are talking about access in terms of, of reading online. Um, and so so those there's no difference between a Hathi Trust, uh, someone who's who's logged in and, and just a member of the general public who, um, who's, who's um, not um, not not authenticated. Um, and so if you are asking about whether or not people can download um, a per, download a, a particular volume that is fully viewable, um, then that is going to depend on, unfortunately, depend on who, what entity performed the digitization, and so that varies from document to document. Um, I don't know if Heather wants to chime in, or I don't know. I don't know if I answered that question correctly, or. Um, address the question or if there's more. Yeah, I would just add that all the all the digitized content in Hathi Trust is contributed by our members and some member libraries have contractual arrangements that we have to respect. Uh, but we're trying to cast as wide a net as possible uh, to provide a more comprehensive collection. So we do our best to make as much content available as openly as possible and to the extent that it's legally permissible. And then Valerie, I'm getting a comment. Someone says that answered my question. So good, glad to hear that. Right. And apologies if I cut you all off prematurely. We're happy to take more questions. So it looks like we've uh, uh, don't see any more after that one. 
Okay. Um, well, again, I just want to thank you all very much for taking some time out um, to, to talk about federal documents. And again, if you um, have further questions, then um, our contact information is in the, the presentation. And again, you will all receive a link to the recording of this as well as um, the slides um, in the next couple of days. So, okay. So thanks uh, and enjoy the rest of your week.